the coaches' challenges. They're well organised. Um, they are what they are in the league, so you respect that fully, and we prepare well and hope to deliver the performance. Nothing changes. Game on game, nothing changes. So it's about us training really well, which we have again today. Uh, I'm looking forward to training more tomorrow and then being prepared for another tough game at Ibrox. But hopefully we recognise the opportunity for us. It is a big game. If you get to, the, the, I suppose, the quarter stage, having won every game and beaten every team in the league, is that a statement of intent in itself? It has to be. I think it'd be foolish to say anything other than that, but it has to be. But um, it's a good start by us. But the, our biggest weapon will be us. Uh, sorry, the biggest enemy to us will be us. Uh, any, lack, any complacency, any lack of preparation will hurt us. So we have to be best prepared for every game, and we'll be. The players are hungry, they're focused, um, they're excited by what's happened so far, but they recognise that some tough games ahead, some tough challenges, and there's some quality opponents, and going to some venues in the middle of winter as well will change change the challenge. So we have to be prepared, one game at a time, and let's see where we are. How do you deal with the enemy of complacency? Mention it every day, every single day. If we fall behind in training, you dig it out. If, it, if the results and the data are sloppy, we dig it out. If someone's late for training, they get fined accordingly. But if someone's sloppy, we don't pick them. That's the best weapon. If someone's not up to the standard, just don't put them in 11. And um, they'll come and talk to you and you tell them why. So it's, I think the group, there's no, no complaints about the group being first class and they're hungry right now. They're really hungry and they're forward to Saturday's game. How are the group reacting to that kind of, those kind of demands, daily demands? They thrive off of it. I think if you're the right, right professional, you thrive off of that environment. You want, to be, you want to be challenged every single day. You want to make sure you challenge the coaches. If our sessions are poor, they'll challenge us. If something doesn't make sense, they'll challenge us. If the analysis is bad, they'll challenge us. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Everyone's got to be on their toes. Given that you started so well in the league, can you explain why you postponed the petrol fat game against? Yeah, we've got players away on, we've got players away on international duty. Simple as that. We've got, I keep saying every week, we've got tightly in squad, we've got players away. So the likes of Gideon, the likes of Nathan, the likes of Fraser Ed and these guys, these are in our squad every day, every week rather. So we, we lose them, so we do the right thing. Do you not think the squad is strong enough to, to withstand the loss of them? It's not about being the squad strong enough, it's about doing the right thing to make sure we're best prepared for every game. And to lose three regular squad members would mean we must be, by nature, we must be weaker than we would otherwise be. So why would you not be best prepared for every game? Does that perhaps show that you're taking that competition seriously as well? Absolutely. Every game you every game go into, we want to win it. So, so we lose three important members of our squad. Uh, we're a tight, lean squad. You know, you know the numbers. Um, so for us, we have, we have to be best prepared for every single game we play. So that's that's our intention. I think it's the two only unbeaten records in Scotland league record. Certainly going head to head this weekend. I know you're very keen to always concentrate on yourselves. Do you view the rest of the teams then as, as much of a muchness, or as a Falkirk considerably better than the others? Or how do you view it? I just view them as an next opponent. That's how you have to do it. You have to give them full respect, prepare well, do analysis, look at their strengths, look at their weaknesses, how can our strengths hurt them, hopefully, and, and we get the three points. It has to be our way, one game at a time. Always keep saying that. I don't mean, I apologise for being boring, but it has to be that way. It has to be that our only focus now is full cook. Where are they strong? Where are they weak? How are our strengths going to hurt them? You know, would it be width? Would it be the, through the middle? Would it be the role of the eight and the ten or the four? How are we going to hurt full cook in front of, hopefully, a packed eye box? As I say, the challenge is there, the expectation is there. Can we deliver the performance? Mark, your former club Redford have already sacked your successor. How do you feel about that? Do you think that puts your time at the club in a better light? No, I can't. I can't. It's, it wouldn't be right for me to comment about, about Brentford. It's, it's, that would be totally inappropriate. But all I can say is in Lee Carsley, they've got a top guy, a top character, um, a football man through and through, good coach, knowledgeable, experienced. So all I can say, as I say, is it'd be very highly Lee Carsley. We can ask you about something else then. Um, Celtic owner Derek Desmond asked about, again, spoke about the British League. I know Rangers have their opinion on it, but from an English coach coming up to Scotland, do you think there's an appetite from that from south of the border? I, don't, I wouldn't. I would never move to those Premier League circles to tell you about, about that side of it, but um, I'm sure sooner or later, sometime in the future, not saying near future, sometime in the future, I'm sure that will happen. But uh, I'm, there's a lot of hurdles to overcome before that. Uh, become a reality. Would you fancy your boys against some of the teams in England? Well, Premier League? No, that's, let's be realistic here. You know? Let's be realistic and keep the conversation serious, I think. But uh, you, know, we, you have to respect the money down south, respect the work that's been done in building squads and teams down south. It'd be very foolish to be disrespectful of that fact. Why do you think it will happen? I think the draw, I think, um, just my opinion, just my opinion, I think um, what dominates down south right now is TV money. Obviously, the, the, the TV money and the financial climate is different down south than north of the border. So, therefore, I think a product you're always trying to keep fresh. 
and how would you keep a product fresh? I'm sure you get to the stage sooner or later, you get to the stage where game, Team X versus Team Y hasn't got the same appeal to the average man in the street. Whereas uh, Man United versus Rangers, Celtic versus Arsenal, etc. It's new, it's fresh, huge fan bases, global fan bases. It's another level of excitement. And I'm sure any product is always looking to keep it fresh. Dermot Desmond says he thinks it's inevitable, but, but Richard Scudamore said in 2009 it was a no-go area, a non-starter. Is there, do you think the appeal in England and the interest in the old firm that there is obviously up here? I think, I think if you ask any football people down south, they recognise the potential of the clubs such as Celtic and Rangers. Absolutely, there's no doubt about that. But again, there's many, many hurdles to overcome. Where would they go? What level? How would they get in? How would you start that process? It'll take far, far smarter guys than I am, that's for sure, to work that one out. But um, it's just that the, the size of the clubs, the global attraction. Don't forget we're talking about, so let's talk about Premier League games taking place in New York or this type of, this type of progression. If that's the case, the global fan base and the, and the, the, the attraction of a Glasgow um, club, Celtic or Rangers is, is obvious. Mm. Can I ask you about your team news for? Yeah, same, same. All, everyone's fit and well. The long-term injuries are still long-term injured, as in um, Temps and, and Cammy's getting closer, and John Eustace. Other than that, all is good. What's this that you should be John Eustace? He's just getting, trying to get fit. And once he gets fit, we'll sit down and have a conversation, but John's got to get fit and he's in the process of doing that, hopefully. Is he on the books at Rangers at the moment? Not at the moment, no. but he's got, a, he's got a role to play here right now, so he's working with us and uh, his experience is vitally important. I mean, he must be very keen if he's working you know, he's, without any money for it. He's a good guy. John's a good guy. He's played at the highest level for a number of years. An outstanding player. Great knowledge of the game. Going to be an ex excellent coach in the future. But right now, he wanted to be a player. And he wanted to be a player for Rangers. And when do you think that is likely to happen? Are we talking weeks? Months? Hopefully, we'll be talking a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.